Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series reading The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Without further ado, returning to The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, as read by Lord Naren White. Well, I see I was up a stump and up at good. Providence had stood by me this fur all, all right. But I was hard and tight aground now. I see it weren't a bit of use to try it to go ahead. I'd got to throw up my hand, so I says to myself, here's another place where I'd got to risk the truth. I opened my mouth to begin, but she grabbed me and hustled me in the, in behind the bed and says, Here he comes. Stick your head down lower. There, that'll do. You can't be seen now. Don't you let on you're here. I'll play a joke on him. Children, don't you say a word. I see I was in a fix now, but it weren't no use to worry. There weren't nothing to do but just hold still and try and be ready to stand from under when the lightning struck. I had just one little glimpse of the old gentleman where, when he come in. Then the bed hid him. Mrs. Phelps, she jumps for him and says, Has he come? No, says her husband. Goodness gracious, she says. Where in the world can it become of him? I can't imagine, says the old gentleman. And I must say it makes me dreadful uneasy. Uneasy, she says. I'm ready to go distracted. He must have come and you've missed him along the road. I know it's so. Something tells me so. Why, Sally, I couldn't miss him along the road. You know that. But, oh, dear, dear, what will Sis say? He must have come. You must have missed him, he... Oh, don't distress me any more. I'm already distressed. I don't know what in the world to make of it. I'm at my wit's end and I don't mind acknowledging. I'm right scared. I'm right down scared. But there's no hope that he's come. For he couldn't come and me miss him. Sally, it's terrible. Just terrible. Something's happened in the boat, sure. Why, Silas, look up yonder. Up the road. Ain't that somebody coming? He sprung to the window at the head of the bed. And that give Mrs. Phillips the chance she wanted. She stooped down quick at the foot of the bed and give me a pull and out I come. And when he turned back from the window there she stood a beaming and a smiling like a house afire and I standing pretty meek and sweaty alongside. The old gentleman stared and says, Why, who's that? Who do you reckon it is? I have no idea. Who is it? It's Tom Sawyer. By jings, I most slumped through the floor. But there weren't no time to swap knives. The old man grabbed me by the hand and shook and kept on shaking. And all the time how the woman did dance around and laugh and cry and then the, how uh, they both did fire off questions about Sid and Mary and the rest of the tribe. But if they was joyful, it weren't nothing to what I was, for it was like being born again. I was so glad to find out who I was. Well, they froze to me for two hours, and at last, when my chin was so tired it couldn't hardly go any more, I had told them more about my family, I mean the Sawyer family, than ever happened to any six Sawyer families. And I explained all about how we blowed out a cylinder head at the mouth of White River, and it took us three days to fix it, which was all right, and worked first rate. Because they didn't know what would, uh, didn't know but what it would take three day, what it would take three days to fix it. If I'd have called it a bolt head, it would be, it would have done just as well. Now I was feeling pretty comfortable all down one side, and pretty uncomfortable all up the other. Being Tom Sawyer was easy and comfortable, and it stayed easy and comfortable till by and by I hear a steamboat coughing along down the river. Then I says to myself. Suppose Tom Sawyer comes down on that boat, and suppose he steps in here any minute and sings out my name before I can throw him a wink to keep quiet. Well, I couldn't have it that way. It wouldn't do at all. I must go up the road and waylay him. So I told the folks I reckoned I would go up to the town and fetch down my baggage. The old gentleman was for going along with me, but I said no. I could drive the horse myself, and I'd druther he wouldn't take no trouble about me. Chapter 33 So I started for town in the wagon, and when I was halfway I see a wagon coming, and sure enough it was Tom Sawyer. 
and I stopped and waited till he come along. I says, hold on, and it stopped alongside, and his mouth opened up like a trunk, and stayed so, and he swallowed two or three times like a person that's got a dry throat, and then says, I ain't ever done you no harm, you know that. So, then, what do you want to come back and ain't from ate me for? I says, I ain't come, I ain't come back, I ain't been gone. When he heard my voice, it righted him up some, but he weren't quite satisfied yet. He says, Don't you play nothing on me, because I wouldn't on you. Honest Injun, you ain't a ghost. Honest Injun, I ain't, I says. Well, I, I, well, that ought to settle it, of course. But I can't somehow seem to understand it no way. Looky here, weren't you ever murdered at all? No, I weren't murdered, ever murdered at all. I played it on them. You come in here and feel of me if you don't believe me. So he done it, and it satisfied him, and he was that glad to see me again. He didn't know what to do, and he wanted to know all about it right off, because it was a grand adventure, and mysterious, and so it hit him where he lived. But I said, leave it alone till by and by, and told his driver to wait, and we drove off a little piece, and I told him the kind of a fix I was in, and what did he reckon we better do. He said... Let him alone a minute, and don't disturb him. So he thought and thought, and pretty soon he says, It's all right. I've got it. Take my trunk in your wagon, and let on its yearn. And you turn back and fool along slow, so as to get to the peace, to, uh, so as to get to the house, about the time you ought to. And I'll go towards town a piece, and take a fresh start, and get there a quarter or a half hour after you. And you needn't let on to know me at first. I says, all right, but wait a minute, there's one more thing, a thing that nobody don't know but me, and that is, there's a black here that I'm a trying to steal out of slavery, and his name is Jim, old Miss Watson's Jim. He says, what? What Jim is? He stopped and went to studying. I says, I know what you'll say. You'll say it's dirty, low-down business, but what if it is? I'm low-down. And I'm a going to steal him, and I want you to you keep mum and not let on, will you? His eyes lit up, and he says, I'll help you steal him. Well, I let go all holds, and then, like I was shot, it was the most astonishing speech I ever heard. And I'm bound to say Tom Sawyer felt considerable in my estimation. Only I couldn't believe it. Tom Sawyer, a black stealer? Oh, shucks, I says. You're joking. I ain't joking either. Well then, I says, joking or no joking, if you hear anything said about a runaway black, don't forget to remember that you don't know nothing about him, and I don't know nothing about him. Then we took the trunk and put it in my wagon, and he drove off his way and I drove mine. But of course I forgot all about driving slow on account of being glad and full of thinking. So I got home a heap too quick for that length of a trip. The old gentleman was at the door, and he says, Why, this is wonderful. Whoever would have thought it was in that mare to do it. I wish we'd have timed her. And she ain't sweated a hair, not a hair. It's wonderful. Why, I wouldn't take a hundred dollars for that horse now. I wouldn't, honest. And yet I'd sold her for fifteen before, and thought twas all she was worth. That's all, he said. He was the innocentest, best, soul, best old soul I ever see. But it weren't surprising. Because he weren't only just a farmer, but he was a preacher too, and had a little one-horse log church down back of the plantation, which he built in himself at his own expense, for a church and schoolhouse, and never charged nothing for his preaching, and it was worth it too. There was plenty other farm preacher, farmer preachers like that, and done the same way down south. In about half an hour, Tom's wagon drove up to the front stile, and Aunt Sally, she see it through the window because it was only about fifty yards, and says, Why, there's somebody come. I wonder who tis. Why, I do believe it's a stranger, Jimmy. That's one of the children. Run and tell Liz to put on another plate for dinner. Everybody made a rush. We'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel.
light be with you all. Take care and thanks again.